Right. Now, whenever there is a big violent tragedy, like the Sandy Hook shootings, the media always seem to seize upon video games and blame them, uh, even like, at least partially, for what's happened. I'm here today to tell you why this is a fundamentally flawed viewpoint. Now, for a start, real violence isn't like fake violence. You'd think this was obvious, but apparently not. When you punch someone, in reality, there is no loud thwack. To kill someone with a gun does not require you to empty out a cliff into them. If you shoot someone in the head, their head does not explode in a fountain of blood and brains. There is no Wilhelm scream, and their body is not catapulted around like a ragdoll. Real violence is brief, unceremonious, and hugely unpleasant. Video games are a form of entertainment. They have to have some level of spectacle, some level of challenge as well. And this means that even the most realistic games, there is a lot of distance between the game's violence and actual violence. If you think of it like this, no one would consider dropping an iron on a cat's face. Just wouldn't do it. And yet Tom and Jerry is historical, it's a classic. Even with Looney Tunes, the number of times Daffy Duck, is it Daffy Duck? Yeah, Daffy Duck's Looney Tunes, sorry. The number of times Daffy Duck will get shot in the face in an episode is absurd. And all he does is just plonk his beak back on and look a bit grumpy and say, You're <laughs> Think of it like a scale. You know, you have real violence in the middle, kind of zero point. You know, in all its unpleasant, realistic, accurate proportions. We take stuff away, we go down the negative side, and we end up at the kind of cartoonish slapstick of the likes of Tom and Jerry and Looney Tunes. Equally, we go the other way, we up the gore, up everything like that, and we end up with the kind of violent spectacle of the video games. Now, this is an area of some quite a fair deal of research, and there have been studies that show that violent video games can lead to an increase in aggression. Equally, as one expert in field point in that interview, you get increased levels of aggression when you struggle to open a carton of milk. There have been a wide array of studies with a wide variety of results. And yes, some of them have shown an increase in aggression. But one thing that hasn't come up is the translation of this aggression to real world violence. It just hasn't happened. Equally, when you hear the term violent video games used in research and in the media, there isn't even a kind of consensus on what is meant by this. Even, there isn't even a consensus on what is really meant by when they say aggression. And the fact is, most rational, sane people can tell the difference between the pretend violence and real violence. And there's simply not enough evidence to suggest that if I were to shoot someone in a video game, that I'm more likely to shoot someone in reality. Now, there was a survey done recently in America of parents. It's about 1,000 parents with a child under the age of 18 in their home. 89% of these people said they thought violent video games were a problem, with this being divided around 50-50 between thinking it was a major problem and a minor problem. 68% of these people thought that the ESRB, the Games Racing Board, allowed parents to make their rating system was allowing women parents to make an informed decision. So if we take these two facts together, it seems like there's an obvious solution. If you think that violent video games are a problem, but you also think that the rating system is accurate and informative, the solution should be obvious, or perhaps I'm being massively naive here. When your little 12-year-old oik asks for kill murders free sex, you say no, you may not have kill murders free sex, you are not old enough. And if the little brat throws a tra tantrum, punish them as you see fit. Problem solved. Now, video games aren't the only ones that take heat over this kind of thing. Films also face a bit, face a bit of media scrutiny, but it isn't as much as it used to be because films are now a more established media. And I think that's why video games are seized upon quite so often these days, because it's a new media. Therefore, it's a threat to the old media. Hence, news calls pick, helps you get your news corporations picking on them because they're an easy target and they need something to fill up their 24 hour news broadcasts. But there is, there is a worse kind of attack on video games, and it comes from the NRA in America. Again, they pick on video games because it's an easy target, but it also distracts from what I see as the real issues when something like this happens the issues of mental illness and of gun control. No sane person would take an assault rifle, walk into a school, kill a load of kids, and then shoot themselves. It just wouldn't happen. Most rational people would never consider doing that. 
there's not video games that trigger this, it's the fact this person had mental problems and was able to get a weapon to do something with those mental problems. Now, recently, I mean a couple of days ago, Obama has announced a volume-rated gun control program, including renewing a prohibition on assault weapons that were that re expired in 2004. Uh, these kind of weapons, as like I said, were used in the Sandy Hook shootings. And these kind of weapons are typically used by the military and by SWAT teams. These aren't like shotguns that farmers use to keep birds off their land. They're not a rifle that hunter uses to stalk deer. Their only purpose is against people. These weapons should not be in civilian hands. I really, really hope Obama gets this through. But he's going to face a fight, and I have a horrible sinking feeling that it might be a fight he loses. So, when you see violent video games being attacked in the media, think to yourself, well, where is the evidence? They've quoted, a, they've quoted a study here. What about the other studies? Where is this in the broader context of other research? And think, maybe, what else is there that they're not talking about here? Why is there so much focus on here when there are other issues? And I hope all of you rational people will be able to sit there and think, clearly see through this unfounded attack on an excellent form of entertainment. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah. That's what I said. Yeah. So yeah, go ahead. <laughs> any, any, any questions? Uh, more of a point I'm not really sure aware of, but there's actually a lobby group within Parliament, which includes a uh, site found by a uh, Labour MP. Uh, for rights for gamers. Um, so basically, um, well, whenever there's a controversy like the next Call of Duty comes out, um, they speak out against so what make the same arguments that you're making. Um, it might be worth you looking them up. I can't remember exactly. Yeah, I mean, you always see it, and always there is a huge amount of ignorance <coughs> regarding these kinds of things. Like, there's always kind of, you call it something you call it Duty Games, so you have like the shocking moment, and there was a big controversy about Modern Warfare 2, where one of the missions, I think, one of the early missions, had you walk through, there was a basically massacre in airport, and everyone went, oh, it's terrible, it's corrupting our children. Uh, it turns out you didn't actually have to partake in this, you could just wander through and let the, the AI do all the killing. Mm -hmm. And if you just look at that, you think, oh, it's hideous, but if you look at that in the context of the whole story, as stupid as modern warfare stories are, then it makes a little more sense. But yeah, usually these attacks are ignorant of kind of broad context of a research and context within the game and generally just kind of quite reactionary and panicky and intending to instill fear in people, that kind of thing. Do you not think that imposing control on weapons doesn't really solve the real issue at the core? So I mean, say you ban assault rifles and a guy you know, could well have brought a shotgun. You ban a shotgun, you ban a handgun, you could brought a knife. Like the real issue is well, the guy Yes. Well, yes, mental illness is a kind of difficult issue to deal with, but if you can stop access, and you know, you solving one problem can help move on to the next one. If you restrict access to these kind of things, you can reduce the likelihood of things happening. No one, like, I don't think anyone's been saying that if you ban assault weapons, you're going to stop all massacres and people snapping and anything like that. But it's a step in the right direction is the point. You know, um, we can't just, you know, these people, you know, the NRA cannot keep saying they go, oh, Second Amendment, when this is like a centuries old amendment that was intended for very different times, you know. Fact is, um, there was a series of interviews with people around this field, and the fact is they're saying that we are actually in one of the safest, you know, healthiest world sort of, you know, civilization has ever been. So, you know, this kind of thing, oh, we've got to have homeowners have the right to defend themselves and stuff. They're not likely to be attacked. It's a very different world from when the Constitution, this amendment was first, you know, when that was first put in. So to kind of cling on to that is a bit like, you know, clinging on to sails as a method of going across the ocean when we have so many more. We've advanced, it's changed. Do you think there could be an argument that the against reduce violence because it is a yeah, there is, there is, yeah, there is, there is, like I said, there's a lot of research around these various things and there have been some studies that say, yes, this actually reduces the chance of real world violence because instead of going and punching someone in the face, you hop on a video game and shoot harmless ones and zeros in the face. It's, you know, like I say, it's a punching bag, you know, cathartic relief. Yeah.
No, I think there are the quite a few disadvantages about the video games. Like the, um, for example, like the you know p- um, people becoming more and more reclusive. Do you not think that's a problem as well? Aside from violence. Oh, there are. Well, with um, many modern games these days, there is a strong focus on multiplayer. Typically, you know, we have friends' lists or consoles, that kind of thing. You'll do them maybe even if. Like normally it's not practical to go out with your mates every night, but often it can be really easy just to fire up your console, you can hop on, chat to your mates, play some games with them. It's you think of the kind of gamer as this kind of kind of fat nerdy Cheeto covered person sitting in the dark room in front of a computer. There's that kind of stereotype, but in reality a broad variety of people play games. It can be quite social, you know, even if you're come across the internet, if you invite people around, you might play split screen, something like that. There is uh, gaming is a lot more social than it once was, certainly. Uh, I think. Go on. Two more then. Okay. Uh, who's in? Uh, Zach. Yeah, you're good. All right. Um, I was thinking about this the other day because I like, often find to be able to say that I'm not going to use you know, killing people, that kind of thing. Do you reckon there would be a good argument to basically place our, our cause within the context of art in that um, it's storytelling and it's um, entertainment? And then maybe we could say that people who are arguing against it are arguing against like democratic rights to um, express ourselves. That yeah, that is one of the um, that's one of the arguments. There is a kind of counter group to the kind of NRA attacking video games. They protested, and there was I think recently a Supreme Court decision was kind of ignoring the NRA, something around those lines. And that was basically their point. You know, you can't really restrict this level of freedom of speech and that kind of thing. You know, freedom of expression. These things have as much right to kind of exist as any other media. Do you think that people have different sections of um, kind of violence that is so silly? Um, oh, definitely. Influenced by video games, but in of the different kinds of violent video games that play. Because you get some video games that are by, um, like fantasy based, some sci fi based. Do you think yeah. that any of them can well, have that, different Yeah, on? that's one of the problems with trying to research, research in the field, is there are so many kind of, there's such a broad definition of violence. One study may have this definition, one study may use this that it's actually incredibly difficult to make real research. Um, there's a game about 15 years ago, Come Again, but basically you're driving around running over, yeah, put in pun. But basically you're driving around running over pedestrians, and they thought, oh, those are terrible, so they censored it and basically replaced the pedestrians with zombies and all the blood with green blood. You know, is green blood less bad than red blood? You know, there's all that kind of thing. You know, there are various fighting games that are completely bloodless, but are, you know, Quite brutal in some of their attacks, is they are they less bad than something more gory? You know, there is such a broad spectrum of what could be considered violent that it's quite difficult to lead to research. And I can see why that might lead to people's different interpretation of violence. But I think you know the level of research there is very little evidence that it actually translates to real world violence. So a kind of constant attack on violent games seems kind of absurd, really. Isn't it? Thank you very much.